Good day to you. Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Hey, welcome to this family Bible study hour. We're going to do another little special today. Have ye not read how many times Christ would say that when asked a question? In other words, had you read God's Word, you wouldn't have to ask that question is what he's saying. Or many times he would say, it is written. What I really want to get you to do today is I want you to learn how to focus on what Christ says. Many times uh, in reading and so forth, we do not hold that focus, and you're going to miss the more in-depth meaning from God's Word, especially if it's from the mouth of Christ. In what it is He's referring to, a deeper message that you should see. Usually that is always the case. In other words, if He states, it is written, or have you not read, he's referring to what we would call today in the King James Bible, the Old Testament, uh, the Torah to some, meaning it was written there, it's still in effect, haven't you ever read it? So with that thought in mind, and again, remember, I'm, gonna, I'm going to quiz you on focus, that you remember what he said as we go through one example of have ye not read read. Now, uh, Christ has just uh, cleansed the temple and ran the dove sellers and money changers out. And we're going to pick it up there in that 12th verse of Matthew chapter 21. Let's go with it. Concentrate now. Verse 12 reads, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out them that sold and bought in the temple. I mean, God's house is not a house of commerce. And overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. A little quick stop here and there, you know, like at the quick mart to get an offering to God, something someone else has raised or taken care of. You're supposed to take the very best you have. In other words, you understand? Okay. In other words, they had turned God's house into a house of commerce and ritual, man's traditions. Verse 13, and said unto them, it is written, oh, it's in the Torah, in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 11, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Uh, and I believe that's also, or maybe that is Isaiah 56, 7 for part of that, okay? He quotes, it is written. And by and what he's looking forward to and knowing is that when he returns at the second advent, who's going to be in this house of God? Paul would tell you in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 that the false Messiah will sit in the temple claiming to be God, showing the world uh, that he is God. Verse 14, And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. He was a can-do type Messiah. In other words, the others would talk about healing, Christ would do it. Verse 15, And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna, which is being interpreted, save now, and of course only the Messiah could do that. Uh, to the son of David, Hosanna to the son of David. They were sore displeased uh, because the son of David, of course, the, that was able to save would be Hosan, Hose, which is to say Yeshua, which is to say the Savior, the son of David, through that stem. They knew that the children were calling him Messiah. And incidentally, when you have a nice little house of commerce going here and the till fills up pretty good and someone steps in that is able to actually do the work of God, it's a little embarrassing to them. Verse 16, And they said unto him, these religionists, Hearest thou what these say? Question. In other words, don't you hear what they're calling you? Because certainly they did not accept him as such when in fact he was. And Jesus said unto them, now listen, sharpen up for me. Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings 
Thou hast perfected praise. Now, what did Christ say? Focus, pay attention. Where is he quoting from? Have you ever read it? Well, naturally, he's referring to Psalms 8. Let's go to that 8th Psalms and let's think on it a moment. Let's see what, what it was that he was referring to. And and draw from it. Let's, let's focus on the Word of God. And Psalms 8, let's take it with verse 1. We'll just cover the entire psalm. There's not that much of it. Let's understand what Christ was talking, speaking of. Now, had they read, perhaps they would have understood. Okay? The psalm is addressed to um, Gittith. Uh, Gittith means wine press, so it means a time of harvest where the wine, the grapes are pressed. All right, so meaning this is how it will come about. The and I will in advance tell you that the next psalm, which is the ninth, is to the chief musician unto Muthleben. Muthle means um, lab, rather muth muth lab bin. It, it means um, death brought by the sun, meaning the sun killed someone, the babe killed someone. Who was it? Well, speaking of David, we know that was Goliath, okay, the giant. Think about it. Focus. Verse 8, ver and, uh, chapter 8, rather, and verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? In other words, he's in control. Our Father is. His glory is on earth. And yet he's in control of the heavens as well. The creator of all things. Verse 2. This is the reason we came here. Focus. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained. Now you will receive what Christ wanted you to receive. He didn't quote all of it. Ordained what? ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. In other words, there was a great deal more written. And that's why he would say, have you not read? Have you never read? Not only out of the mouths of babes, God would ordain this. Out of the mouths of his children, he would ordain the strength because of the enemies, that he might still the enemy. Of course, looking forward to the, the malefactor of all malefactors would be the spurious Messiah standing in Jerusalem and drawing here from the time that that lad, that child, when all of Israel was sacked, so to speak, every day, boom, 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 out came this giant, Goliath, and he would say, send out your champion. And all of Israel would hide and quake. But out of the mouth, mouth of a babe, God ordained little David. And David had the practical experience. God doesn't just pass a magic wand over. David had practiced and practiced with a slingshot. He knew in protecting his sheep, that he could take the giant. He knew why. He knew the ballistics of the situation using common sense. And David would go out. He would take down this giant, a babe, when all of Israel was quaking. What a beautiful truth. Let's complete the chapter now. Verse 3. When I consider thy heavens... The work of thy fingers, the moon, and the stars, which thou hast ordained. In other words, you put it all in place. And it is magnificent when you walk out at night, especially when the stars show. And you look to the heavens, and you see the majesty and the order of all things that he placed and controls to this day. Verse 4. What is man? Little, little man in the flesh body. What is man that thou art mindful of him? That, that you even care about him? When you look at the majesty of creation and, and you see um, 
a human being that would seem like an ant, if you will picture it that way. What, what have you got? What is it that you even care about him? And the son of man that thou visiteth him. In other words, uh, Adam. And the second Adam would be Christ, that he would send Christ to visit and would prepare that way, ordain salvation, that we would have that way of escape from the evil of the world through repentance. Verse 5, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, the Elohim, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Verse 6, Thou madest him, who? Adam, man, to have dominion over the works of thy hands. You put him in charge. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Supposed to be, but a lot of people do not use the common sense of understanding as little David would out of the mouths of that babe how to do it. They, they're not efficient with their the um, equipment that it takes to get a job done because they don't utilize common sense and they're not bold enough to step forward in many cases and take charge. God did not create his election, or let us say Christians, to be second-class citizens. He placed you in charge, especially of your own uh, self, your surroundings. He put these things under you, meaning he expects you to take care of them. How you doing? Verse 7, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field. You're supposed to manage, tend the field. Verse 8, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. In other words, he created the, this has reference even to the sixth day men where he placed over them the hunting and the fishing and that man, Adam, over tending the field. Verse 9, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And so it is. Well, have we focused on that? Have we focused right real good on it? That, that we would see that it was David, in fact, and the next psalm does have to do with the killing of Goliath. Uh, Mutleben, being being son, and Mutleben, death, brought on by the son, that son, that uh, uh, David, who would be that lad, that child, when his older brothers, big, tall, strong brothers, would shake and be shamed when this babe would go forth. But that babe, uh, again, I want to emphasize, did God do it all for David? No. God simply blessed him. But David had gained the experience to know that when he picked up that smooth stone, he had already killed a bear and a lion. He knew that that, that clumsy, awkward giant, that he could sink that stone right in his forehead because he could hit the mark from a great distance. He didn't have any doubt about that. And he knew that God would guide him as well. And when God is with you, who can be against you? No one. You have the victory, but you use the common sense that's focusing on the situation. But have we, this is the point I want to bring you to, have you truly focused on it? You read an account written by David at the wine press, the time of the harvest well enough, but have you actually gone back where this deed was accomplished, where that babe accomplished this, and focused on that, perhaps you might get a little better look at what God, through the Son, is talking about. Well, where would we have to go to find that? In 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And let's go there at this time. 1 Samuel, we go to the deed itself, where it was accomplished, and let's focus on that word a little more. Now, Let's pick, let's pick it up, if we may, in 1743, 
for the sake of time. We can see there, you remember the situation, the Philistine army had, um, had, conquer, had not conquered, but had treed, I will say it, Israel for many days now. And little David, who tended the sheep, already having been anointed by God, passed over the big boys. Uh, Jesse would have approximately ten children. It would be this David that God had already anointed through Samuel as king to follow Saul. But Jesse, David's father, wanted to send some food up to the front lines to his older brothers, the brothers of David. So he sent David with food and, um, and comfort to the front line. And when David gets there, he's giving the food to his brothers and out steps Goliath, met daring all Israel. And David looks at the army of Israel hiding and quaking and looks at his own brothers quaking. And he said, well, I can take that Philistine. And of course, his brothers, they, in jealousy, said, you cannot, you go away. Have you come out here to shame us? And of course, they were frightened. And David stated, no, I can kill him. So ultimately, Saul gets the word, and David goes to Saul and declares that he can take him. And Saul puts his own armor on him. And of course, it won't fit because this is a babe. Babe meaning a youth. And... David said, no, I work with what I have to work with. In other words, never, never use another man's gifts or way, the sword, the shield, the literal sword and shield, if you're used to a slingshot. Because the slingshot is more effective if you have God's blessings and a skillful hand. Size has nothing to do with it. The projectile by using leverage, and again, the blessings of God, was adequate, would get it done. And regardless of the skill of the enemy, which is to say the giant. You might, uh, at the same time as we begin to focus closer, you might recognize the fact that this is, could be very similar to the deadly wound that one of the beasts receives to the head. A type of that to the one world political system in these end times. Okay, with that having been said, and with David now having declared, I can, I can take him, then the next day, boom, 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 out comes Goliath. Israel is quaking. And we pick it up in verse 43 with everything else having been said. And in verse 43, we read, And the Philistine said unto David, he looked at him, the scrawny kid, comes out and, I mean, we're looking at the champion of the Philistines. And they send out this kid. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Now, this wouldn't mean anything to David, for there is only one God. The idols, gods, uh, um, worship of anything else or sort through hypnosis or spells to a Christian is nothing. Because we have the protector of protectors, which is to say God. If your faith is strong enough and someone tries to put a spell on you, forget it. They'll bend their, they'll bend their uh, own faith uh, by trying to attack the child of God. If you are truly informed and founded, what's the Philistine thinking, this giant, Goliath? He's saying, you come out here with apparently a stick or something. I am a champion. I have a shield. He had a sword, and I forget how long the thing was. David could barely pick it up. And, um, and he, he, felt in, he felt angered and bewildered that this kid would come out. And again, cursing him in the name of his own gods. Now, 
Let's listen closely. Verse 44, And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Now, I'm going to give you a little quiz now. What did Christ say back in the beginning when we started this and I asked you to focus? Oh, well, let's say it's a scripture. I can remember it. Uh, he said, um, have you not read? Have you not read what? I, you know, I think, I'll, I think I will, just for the sake of time, I'm going to turn back to Matthew chapter 21, and I'm going to read it to you again so that your focus retightens, that it sharpens. Uh, and um, what did he say? He said, Yea, have ye never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, that babe was, go, was David. And he went out there and... He killed Goliath, yeah, yeah, right there, out of the mouth of the babe. I hope that's not your focus, because the subject is what came out of the babe's mouth. You must learn to concentrate and focus on the subject. It doesn't matter that David killed Goliath, though it's wonderful. But what I mean is, what came out of David's mouth? We heard what came out of Goliath's mouth. That's not the subject. Christ's point was that out of the mouth, not harm, not slingshot, but mouth uh, of David, this babe, would come the word that Christ wanted you to connect with. The incident of the time of his reporting. Are we focused now? Have we maintained the subject? Not the killing of Goliath, which is, is a, uh, a wonderful thing and part of the building to it. But the subject is what came out of the mouth of the babe. David as the lad. Let's listen and let us learn and let us focus so that we understand how we may be overcomers as David was an overcomer. For it was out of the mouth of that babe that, the, that therein the secret lies. Verse 45. Then said David. Now this is coming out of David's mouth. This is important. Then said David to the Philistine. Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. In other words, you have intimidated them. They hide, they shake, they tremble. Verse 46, still coming out of his mouth, and this is what Christ wanted you to absorb. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will, repeat, will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beast of the earth. That, why? Are you still focused? What came out of the mouth of the babe? That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That's what's important that came out of the mouth of the babe that God would use this David to bring down this impossible giant, it would seem, to a person that thinks in the flesh without going to the ingenuity, the gifts that God gives man, such as this case, the babe, that would take the sling stone, five smooth ones, and place it in his slingshot, 
in wood with the force uh, that he was able to do, penetrate the forehead and kill. That it was impossible when it was really quite simple. Now again, I want to remind you, did God strike down Goliath? David did. David, though he knew God was with him and God would supervise and take care, but David had to put in his output, his input. That is his gift that he had practiced with. Being a can-do type person, using the leverage that God gives the mind when one follows God. And David had always done that because David was a man and a lad after even the very heart of God. There was nothing put on about him, nothing fakish. He was honest, true, and humble, never to take credit for the fact, I killed a bear, I killed a lion. He knew why he had the gift and the knowledge to accomplish these things. Because he had God with him. Now, and was to prove that God is real. It's not some force out in space, but that we made in his image, he being our father, that when we believe upon him, that he gives us the talents to be can-do type people. Not second-class citizens, but people that control their own lives when they follow their destiny that is written in the Word of God. Are we finished? No. We still must focus because David is still speaking. And these words are very precious in that God wanted you to focus upon them through the Son, Jesus Christ, when he would say, Have you never read what came out of the mouth of the babe, being David as he slew Goliath? That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, verse 47, and all this assembly, that's to say all this congregation, and I repeat, this congregation to this day, shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. In other words, there was no doubt. I would say, listen and learn from God's word. The focus is this. It was not the fact that David was the one, the lad that killed Goliath, but it was what came out of his mouth as he was doing it. And never could a more beautiful message be delivered concerning Christianity in this generation when our armor is on and in place, that is to say the gospel armor written of in the sixth chapter of Ephesians, that we are we are um, held together by the word of God, our girt, our belt, because the word of God, when we focus on the instructions that we are given to follow, that we can maintain the subject and not let our own minds or someone else draw us away from that subject, that the deep, deeper truth that Christ wanted you to see in that book of Matthew, was that God utilizes his children, even babes, and if he chooses to speak through one as he did David, then the truth will come forth in that manner, and it will be documented by action, not words, words, words. David did not make that statement and then run and hide with the rest. David made that statement directly to the enemy. As God ordained, as it was written in that eighth psalm, to give strength to his children with that gospel armor on and in place. 
to use our talents to defeat the enemy. That's the message when you focus on, have you never read? Our Father's Word is full of deep truths that are so meaningful, so comforting, so productive, promises. But you must focus. You must not let the traditions of men pull you away from your focus on the Word of God, the subject, the object. People today will insert things into scriptures that are traditions of men, flyaway doctrines and malarkey, and will not focus on the in-depth meaning of God's Word, whereby they miss, mislead, not intentionally, they mean well. But my point is this. If you're not going to focus on the Word of God, you're going to end up only receiving half of the knowledge God would have you receive and or be turned in midstream to another subject which you thought was the subject but traditions of men because some great scholar pulled you off on some side street. Never allow someone to change the subject on you. You stick with it. By that I mean the subject that Christ himself through the word, whoever the prophet, whoever the teacher. You stick to that subject and object and take it to its depth. Don't quit. Had we stopped at the 8th Psalm, would we have learned the in-depth truth? Answer, no. Because the subject was, from the book of Matthew, through the word of Christ, out of the mouth of babes. Psalms 8 doesn't say what came out of the mouth of babes. Though that's where it's written, concerning the mouth of babes. We still had to stick to that subject, seeking and desiring, what did the babe say? That's the subject. That's why it's important or Christ would not have brought it up. So in following and sticking with the subject all the way to the end, we found most likely what our enemies will usually say, that is to say the words out of the mouth of Goliath, that is a type, and then we heard those beautiful words that came out of the mouth of that babe to not only Goliath, but the entire Philistine army with one lad one babe marching toward them. He not only said, I will have your head, but the heads of many Philistines this day. You see, God uses whom he will. Some of you have a destiny and a purpose. You can focus on the word of God without letting man sidetrack you with fairy tales, side trips, and insertions that are absolutely sense through traditions of men. Stick to the Word of God. Concentrate on the languages. It's such a rich thing. So what was the purpose of this lecture? To teach you what David said? Yes, but mainly to teach you to focus by giving you an example of how rewarding God's Word is in your daily life. Well, how do I apply this to my daily life? You utilize what you have knowing you are a man, woman, or child of God, babe of God, and that with the skills that He has given you, staying within your own field and your specialties, you are a can-do type person. God will see to it. You may even stump your toe. Don't think David didn't have some bad days out tending sheep as well. How many times he must have used that slingshot before he reached the point of perfection with it practically. And we see that David had much other disappointment. But God would use him. And through him would come that son of David 
which is to say Yeshua Messiah, Jesus the Christ, the only begotten, who would direct you back to the words of that babe to strengthen you in your life today from Psalms 8, not that um, the babe would speak, but that God would use you and you would give the power and foreordain that God's work would be done. Psalms 8, I put you over the sheep, over my creation. If you had your part, he's your father, he owns it all, and you inherit that that you stick to the subject of management, land management, property management, labor management, whatever your profession management, to see that you are a useful, skilled worker of our Heavenly Father and a can-do type individual that has a mind that is brilliant enough that it can focus on what God says rather than what man says. All right. I think that gets the point and drives that old nail so deep into the coffin of traditions of men that you see the point. And when you've made your point, you usually stop. So, we stop there. Now, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? <laughs>